use and or view at your own risk. In this video I'm going to show you how I install unsupported hardware. There are several things that may make a piece of hardware unsupported. This particular piece of hardware is unsupported because neither the manufacturer or Microsoft have any available drivers for it. The very first thing you'll need to do with dealing with any hardware is get the manufacturer the make and the model of the hardware and then from there you can start to seek out the exact driver files for it or the exact files that you need again we're dealing with a PCI sound card so just to give you an example of how to find the model number on a, a sound card I've got an example here and you can see that Sound Blaster will usually keep their model numbers along the edge and their makes along the edge and if you flip it over and look at the label you can get the manufacturer the model number the serial number and other information again you want to try to get as much information as you can so that you can get exactly what you need to install the unsupported hardware if you're dealing with a USB device or something like a camera a USB device you may be able to just flip over or flip, you know, flip around to the back of it and get the model number and the make and, and the manufacturer from there. A camera, you may have to look at like the tag on the cable and get the model number and, and so forth off of it. All right. We'll go ahead and close that. The model number for the, the piece of hardware that we're installing is SB0220. And you'll see why we need this information right now. So just open up your web browser and type in SB0220 and you'll see that it brings up the manufacturer creative sound blaster is the make or sound blaster live 5.1 and the model number is SB0220 what we need is the drivers for this piece of hardware again what makes it unsupported is there aren't any drivers for Windows Vista and above what you want to do is get the latest operating system drivers that you can. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to go to Creative Support website. So we'll just type in Creative Support. Hit the enter key. And you can see the very first thing that comes up is Creative, uh, creative Support LT or Limited in the UK. That's not what I want. That may be what you want. You can always get either get, look for war, worldwide or US. So we're just going to go to worldwide. And that'll take us directly to the support page of their website. So now you want to look for a selection that matches your hardware. So we've got a sound blaster, so we'll go there. And then if you were to look around, you'd notice that this old piece of hardware is, is nowhere listed. When you're dealing with old hardware like this, what you want to do is you want to look for discontinued devices, legacy devices, or other products, something like that. Creative has right down at the bottom, if you, you'll notice, if your product is not listed above, please click here. So we'll click there. And that'll take us to a page with, with a greater selection of products. And it'll, it'll usually stem from the latest product to the oldest. You know, it'll usually go back like five years, seven years, something like that. We know we have a Creative Sound Blaster Live 5.1. So we go to Live. And this is a reason right here that you want to try to get as much information off of that card or that piece of hardware that you can is so all you see all these different makes of this same product you need to be able to differentiate between you know all of these to get down to, to the one you need I know it's just a regular old live 5.1 so I'll select that then I'll select next 
and then we just look around on the page and we want to look for the driver files itself so we see uh, manual selection English that's correct Windows XP professional 64-bit uh, edition you want to download the drivers that match the architecture of your installation of Windows so this is a 32-bit installation so that's not going to do us we'll drop that down and we'll go to XP you also want to again go to the latest version of Windows available now you can look at the last selection here and it says either application or drivers or all I just want the drivers you know that's all we need if we were tried if we tried to install the applications it may or may not work you can try that if you if you happen to need the applications or the software that goes with that hardware but understand more than likely it's not going to install because it just wasn't written for your version of Windows sometimes it may though it's always worth a try so we'll just hit submit and then here this is a good example you also want to get the latest drivers so this one actually has the main drivers and then an updated driver in this case we're going to have to install the drivers and then the updated drivers so we'll go ahead and get both of these files now I've already pre-downloaded these so you just go ahead and download both of these and put them in a location that you can you know you know where it's at your downloads folder or on the desktop we'll go ahead and close this now and you can see here that these are both of the files that you know was downloaded for that card if you were to try to install these it's going to balk and say either it's not for your version of Windows or it's going to give you some other kind of error code I'll go ahead and show you just um, so you can see what happens here is the main driver files we'll just click it and run it we'll say yes to the user account control Now you can see it extracted the files and now it's going to try to run it and we got an error code. Uh, setup could not detect any sound blast or audio card on your system. That's not true. It's in there. But because it wasn't written for this version of Windows it, it, it's just not finding it. Do not hit OK. What we want to do is actually capture the driver files out of this self-expanding archive and in order to do that nine times out of ten it's going to dump these files into your user account temp folder I happen to have a shortcut to my, my doc temp and my win temp folders just for things like this you may not have that um, you can hit Windows Explorer C more than likely users this is the user account that I'm currently logged into and then you can go to app data if you have hidden folders viewable click that and then I believe it's local and then the temp folder and you'll see this is where it dumped the files that if you were to hit this OK button it would just clean up these files and you wouldn't be able to catch or capture the driver files so I'm just going to show you real quick how you can do that and what you're looking for are the driver files uh, in particular the setup information file or .inf file or folder named drivers and you will need to capture the core, the rest of the files that go go along with it so just bounce around in these uh, temporary folders and see which one that you're going to need so we didn't see anything there you're just going to have to look around and find them. That's just part of what it takes to install unsupported software, I mean hardware. So now, look at audio, drivers. And then uh, went to KXP, and you should be able to find an INF file. So there's one INF file, there's another. So that's what we want. So we'll just go back to drivers go up one folder right click that
copy it and paste it to the desktop. Now we've captured the drivers for this card. So we'll just go ahead and close that out. I'll let you see what happens so that you know. When we hit this OK button, it's going to clean up. And all that's gone. So that's just one way and it's going to throw an error because it thinks the program didn't install correctly because it didn't. Just don't worry about that. Cancel it. There are other ways of extracting files from self-extracting archives. What you'll need is an archive program. What I use is pzip. So I'll show you how to do that. I've already got pzip installed, so just go to start. And then I've got the uh, shortcut under the System Tools folder. And then pzip. And we'll start at pzip. And then we will go to File, Open Archive and we'll browse to where our self-extracting archive, which is a binary file or an executable file or what's also known as an EXE file. So we'll just browse to it. I know it's on my desktop. Yours may, you know, if you download it, it's probably going to be in your downloads folder. Select it. And then here are the, the files, all the files. Go to Audio. And then you can see drivers, the, the actual folder that we captured out of that uh, when we ran that executable. It's just simple enough to uh, go ahead and extract everything. What you'll want to do is select all of these files and folders because some of these files may be hidden. So you'll see them under pzip, but if you were to just extract it, just hit extract without selecting anything, it may not pick up all the files. So just highlight, or you can. Control A and select everything. Go to the extract button, hit it. You want to make sure you're, you're going to a new folder and you want to make sure you know where it's extracting it to. And I'm just going to make um, new main drivers because we have two sets. We have a main driver and then an updated driver. And we're going to have to install both of those. And then hit OK. And you can see it created our new folder here. Go ahead and look in there real quick. Live Universal Driver Pack Audio. Oops. Drivers. And then Win2KXP. And you'll see our INF file. In this case, this piece of hardware, INF files. We'll go ahead and close that. Then we'll go to the updated driver. And we will do the same thing just for it. Open Archive, browse to it, again, Desktop, and uh, Live Driver Pack Patch. Select that. Now you can bounce around in here and look for the drivers. And it's probably going to take you a little while. Don't get frustrated. They're in there somewhere. If they're in there, and if they're not, then you're just not going to be able to use that updated driver patch. I happen to know that they're in the bin cab. And this is actually an archive inside of an archive. So we just double click that and that will open up that cab file. And you can see here it looks familiar to you because it's got the same uh, folders with the same names as the main driver file uh, did. So again, make sure you select everything because if it's a hidden file or a system file or something like that, if, if we were to just hit extract without selecting everything, it may not pull all the files. So I'm going to hit extract. And you can see here it's want, what it's wanting to do is actually put it inside of this temporary folder that it created just to read this self-executing uh, archive or self-expanding archive. Change that path. Okay, so we'll delete that and uh, we'll type in new updated drivers. And we'll make sure you're creating a new folder. Hit OK. Alright, now we've got our driver files. You can use this 
for pretty much any piece of hardware that you're trying to install. Let's actually install the Sound Blaster Live 5.1 and this should work from Windows Vista to Windows 10. So go to the start button then on the start menu click the control panel shortcut and then go to device manager. Go ahead and close out our control panel and you can see here this is our sound blaster card but we have two different headings or two different uh, devices that aren't installed that is really just the sound card this is a very old sound card and what it has is a, um, a 15 pin uh, game port on it which will not work from Windows 7 up. It may even be Windows Vista up. They may have stopped supporting it in XP. But what we, we want to do is we want to get it installed anyway without any conflicts or without any resource conflicts so that we don't bog down our computer. There are several ways to install legacy hardware. Um, go ahead and click and highlight that. That'll give us some more options underneath action and view. You can go to action and you can scan for hardware changes. You can add Lexi hardware manually. You'll need to know what type of hardware you're installing and where the driver files are. You can right click the hardware that you're trying to install and select update driver and then search for it automatically. And what that'll do is go out to the Windows uh, update and try to download the device drivers for your hardware. I know that this device doesn't have any drivers from Windows 4, Windows 7, or actually Windows Vista and above, so there's really no sense in doing that. If you didn't know whether or not it was unsupported hardware, say it was just legacy hardware, that'd be the very first thing you'd want to do, or the second thing. First, you want to go to the manufacturer's website and see if you can't get some drivers for your version of Windows, and then if you couldn't, You'd want to see if Microsoft hadn't carried on and developed drivers for later versions of, win of Windows, and this will tell you. So you'll search, it'll go. If we were to click this, it'll, it'll go out on the net. It'll search a Windows Update, see if it can pull some drivers down, and it's going to fail. You can also browse your computer for the driver software, which is what we're going to do, and what's more commonly known as manually installing your driver software. So we'll click that and then you'll need to know where your drivers are located at and you can browse to it so that's no big deal but just make sure that you have checked uh, include subfolders you can also pick from a list of device drivers if you tried to let it search for the correct drivers in the folder that you would, it would we just created and it didn't pick up the INF file you can try and actually point it to the INF file using the, you know, let me pick a, a list of device drivers on my computer. First thing we're going to do is just browse to where we've got our main drivers, including subfolders. So we'll just click that very first folder, hit OK, hit Next. It hit our driver, so it picked it up, and it successfully updated our driver software or our hardware. So we'll close that. You'll see that the device manager refreshes. And now we have the Creative Sound Blaster Live 5.1. It's not designated as such in the device manager. It's actually designated by its chipset, which is EMU10K1. That's fine. As long as it's working, you can right click it, select properties, and you can see that it says this device is working properly. Great. You see we have another entry of a device that isn't recognized. This is, again, is actually part of the Sound Blaster card and is that game port. So we're just going to go through the same thing. So we'll right click it, update driver software. Could search for it automatically, but we know it's not going to happen. So we'll browse the computer for driver software. It's got the last folder that it went to, so we don't need to re-browse to that new driver's folder. Make sure includes subfolders checked. 
You could also try to do it if for some reason that failed manually and click next. Now it picked up our drivers but it says Windows encountered a problem installing the driver software for your device. Don't worry about that just go ahead and close this. Now you'll see that we have an error or a resource conflict which is denoted by the little yellow triangle and it now says it's an unknown device instead of a PCI input device. Go up to action and then scan for hardware changes. Okay, This is where it's trying to go out on the web and find its drivers. That's just something that happens automatically. You can stop that. It's not going to find them. I'll let it go just so you can see. Okay, you can see that it failed. That's what makes this piece of hardware unsupported. So we'll simply close that. Then we'll go back to the device. I'm sorry. Then we'll go up to action. Scan for hardware changes. We'll stop this this time. I know I did that twice. No big deal. Sorry about that and you'll see that it is now picked up as a creative game port but it still has a resource error, error on it don't worry about that that's no big deal right now now what we want to do is go back through the whole thing again and put the updated drivers in there so we'll right click on the, the actual sound part of the sound card update driver browse my computer for driver software we're not going to let it search this time because if we did, what it would do is it would throw up a message saying the proper drivers are installed for your device. I know there's an updated driver, so I'm going to pick it manually. So we're going to go down to pick a list of device drivers on my computer. This device driver is the device driver that's already installed. So we're going to go to have disk and then we are going to browse to our updated driver files and that is in our new updated drivers now what you're looking for is again is a setup information file or a .inf file we'll click bin and then I know that, that it, you'll have to just have to look through the folders like, again you'll just have to find these setup files I know it's in a win2k xp folder click it I know that the, the setup information file for the, the sound part of the sound card is this WDMA EMU. I'll click that. OK. Then this is actually a different heading with the same name or a, or a different driver file with the same name. Just double click it from here. That'll install it. It's finished installing it. Everything's fine. Windows Device Manager refreshed. We're going to do the same for the game port. Right click, update driver software, browse the computer, pick manually. Again, old driver, have disk. You can use the little drop down box here and it'll usually go to the last place that you installed a driver from. Click OK. That's our new driver or our updated driver. Double click it. It installed it again with an error. No problem, don't worry about it. Close it. You can see now it changed it from a creative uh, game port back to another uh, an unknown device again. Action, scan for hardware changes. And it's going to go back through looking at, at Windows Update for the right driver. Just stop that. We know it doesn't have a driver already. And we'll close it. For whatever reason it didn't pick it up this time, just go ahead and scan for hardware changes again. And it picked it up. You know, just scan for hardware changes until it picked it up. Sometimes you might even have to restart the machine. We still have that same resource error. I'll show you how to fix that. Right click the device, go to properties, and we want to make sure we have an error code of 28. And the reason it's throwing an error code of 28 on this device is because it's unsupported from Windows Vista up. And the system file that it's using for a game port is a USB system file. I'll show you that right here. You can go to driver and then uh, driver details. 
and it's actually using a I guess a licensed Logitech driver uh, a driver that Microsoft licensed from Logitech for any game ports and which are all going to be US or most all going to be USB from Windows Vista up because it doesn't support a DB 15 pin game port the old game ports just hit OK and then you want to go down here to uninstall advanced click uninstall and that'll uninstall just that driver so click uninstall do not delete the driver software for that device leave that unchecked hit OK and you'll see now that the device disappeared go back up to action scan for hardware changes it's going to do the same little goofy thing with Windows go ahead and stop that or let it go it doesn't matter close it now you'll see PCI input device back up scan for changes again stop this little monkey and you'll see that the second time you scan for changes it re-recognized it as a creative game port now you want to right click on it select properties and make sure you have an error code of one now in order, I think it's because resources aren't allocated for that device. In order to fix this error code of one, you simply just got to restart your machine. So we'll hit OK. Now you'll see how our device manager sits now. The sound card itself is installed, but the game port has a resource error. Don't worry about that. Close it. We've got an error code of one in it. That means it just needs to be restarted and let the BIOS uh, allocate some resources for it. So go to Start button, and Start menu, and then Restart. And I'll see you on the other side. We're back into Windows again. Go down to Start button, click it, Start menu, Control Panel, Device Manager. Now we'll close out the Control Panel. And you'll see that we don't have any conflict. You can go ahead and open up the sound video and game controller submenu and see that it is now right click it, properties, working just fine. No problem. Device status, no drivers are installed for this device because it doesn't need any. You go to resources, now it's been allocated to input output range. So you are ready to go. So hang on just a second and we'll test this little monkey out. Alright, now what I did is I unplugged the output of, there's two sound cards as you can see, a high definition audio device and then the creative sound card. There's two sound cards, so I unplugged the old sound card and plugged my output into the creative sound card. So we'll give her a little test. certainly hope that gave you some insight on dealing with unsupported uh, hardware. Definitely gave you some insight on installing a uh, Sound Blaster Live 5.1 under Windows Vista and above. It also works in Windows 10. It's installed on a, a version of Windows 10 already. This should work for Sound Blaster Auto G and any other unsupported hardware. Understand that you may be incurring some vulnerabilities for certain pieces of hardware because they are now unsupported. So if there was any kind of vulnerability that was in the, the, the driver software or the software that came with it, it's not being updated anymore. But it's, if it's just a, something like a, a sound card or it's just on a gaming machine like this, like this, then it's not that big a deal. If it's something that's important, a production machine, Go spend the $40 and get you some new hardware. It's a lot easier. Sometimes you just don't have that money and you have to do what you have to do. So. And thank you for watching.